This is part one of a three-part series on detection, prevention, and resolution of incidents that has to do with patch the hash. So from this Kali machine address ends in 124, we're going to launch an attack. The guy was actually fish and he was uh, you know, induced to click on a, opening a Word document that has a single macro, or macro, that invokes a PowerShell command, and it's obfuscated and all that. I have shown that in other videos, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that part. But basically, that initiates a session with the attacker. That session is not very powerful, so he's going to escalate the privileges and get system access into this machine. And because this guy already logged in into the domain controller, his credentials are going to be there. The hash, the NTLM hash, is going to be there for the attacker to grab. So what we're going to be doing next is then uh, from the Kali machine, it can be whatever it is in the world, going through this machine is going to be doing, is going to be executing a command, passing the hash with full access admin rights in it. Let's actually get started. Remember this is the, the Windows machine ends in uh, 21, the domain controller ends in 51 and the hack Kali machine is 124. The attacker machine that ends in uh, 124 as you can see there right here. Let me make that bigger. This is the Windows 7 machine fully patched again we are not exploiting vulnerabilities here ends in uh, 21 and the domain controller, we are not going to even log in into it. It's actually here. Yeah, we, we don't we don't need to log in into it uh, to to do the attack. Let's get started then with this. When the user either clicks from the mail client or whatever he invokes the opening of the Word document. A session gets started. In fact, I can even minimize this, and we see that session in here. As I have shown before, this session is not powerful enough, uh, so we need to escalate privilege, and we do that by we're going to use another exploit of the uh, Windows family for local machines that bypasses the user access control, and the type that works on Windows 10 is called Fault Helper. Okay. We're going to issue two more commands to set the environment to work on 64 bits. That's that command there. And we also. Well that, that screen keeps swapping up, but uh, every time I post a video, that seems to be showing up. So we need to set the targets to uh, Windows uh, 64. And now we are ready to launch the exploit. So. Oh, we need to say the, the, the first session, the innocuous session one, as a trampoline for this uh, to work. It's actually set session one. Now we can do the exploit. That gets us a session that can, as you can see, bypass the user access control, and we can escalate privileges by invoking the get system. So that part is ready. We're gonna get the privileges, the debug privileges. Oh, we need to load Kiwi actually. Load Kiwi first before we can issue Kiwi commands. And now we can get privilege rights and we execute the secure with K, I guess that's a, they're making fun of the local security authority. We execute that command. And notice that this is going to dump all the hashes of all the credentials that are in this system. And because this guy, as I said before, logged in as the administrator, we can actually see that here are the credentials for the administrator. And notice this hash that begins in 33 and ends in E2. We're going to use that. 
And when we execute this Kiwi command, secure, let's say, user administrator domain account and use the NTLM hash that we just saw, we actually get a PID number. We need to remember this one, 6904. We're going to get into that uh, Windows machine by invoking a shell that gets us from wherever the attacker is, is in, inside that compromised uh, machine, and we're going to invoke PowerShell, which exists in every machine. Now, what we're going to be doing next is with that PID that we just saw, uh, 6904, we're going to enter the following command. Six nine zero four. So enter ps host process six nine zero four, and we are good there. Now passing the hash, we're going to execute on that Windows domain controller as a command. In this particular case, is going to be just uh, who am I, which can be used for looking around. But actually, notice that this is the IP address of the uh, domain controller. Uh, we're executing that who am I command with full access rights. And notice that it's taking a while, it's thinking about it, and then it's going to come back, giving us the results of saying, yeah, this is actually the, admin the administrator of the machine. And in the same way that I'm invoking this who am I, that is in this particular case, Inocus. I can be exe uh, executing any uh, privilege uh, command in that machine. As you can see, it has been invoked and it says, yeah, you are the administrator. So that proves that the patch the hash attacks uh, works. In part two, we're going to be showing how using a privilege identity management system in which the credentials are check in and check out and all those passwords are dynamically change prevents this type of attacks uh, from succeeding. But before I do that, let me show you what is it that QReader has been able to detect about this. There's no one but four offenses that fire. Let's take a look at the first one and see what rules contributed to this offense. And notice that all the things that we did, the bypass of the user access control, the execution of the PXSX, uh, all the things that we did, even though there was a, a good level of obfuscation, I didn't show that, but show that in other attacks. Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, QReader, you don't have to have all these rules to fire. Just one that will fire and invite you to investigate the offenses is good enough. And that's not the only one. Let's take a look at this one as well. And let's display the rules there and see what, what anomalies, what things... Oh. oh, actually, that's isn't that the same? 39. I keep clicking on the same one. No, this that's a different one. Let's take a look at the... This one, the 41. And see, you know, because they are indexed by different custom properties, they did not come in the single rule. This is actually when the clicking on the document was actually invoked. I think that the first one we show was a 38. Let's look at the 39. We display the rules. You see? You know, all these things that were actually done. Again, only one rule would have been enough to initiate the investigation. In the next videos, we're going to show how to prevent this attack from happening. And in the third part of the video, we're going to show how you go into the process of managing the incident and bringing it to a closure in the most professional way.